Hey everyone, so in today's video we're going to be looking at one of two types of redox cells and that is the voltaic cell. Uh, it's also called the galvanic cell uh, but for the purpose of this video I'll just be calling it a voltaic cell but they are the same things. So let's firstly look at what a voltaic cell is. So a voltaic cell is an electrochemical cell and that basically means it's used to generate electrical energy. So for example, electrical energy to light up a light bulb or something. Um, so it uses a spontaneous redox reaction to generate this electrical energy. So what we mean by spontaneous redox reaction is that when we talk about redox reactions, we're talking about electron transfer. So electrons are being transferred from one cell to another cell. And this movement of electrons from one cell to the other cell generates electrical energy because movements of electrons from one place to another, this electron flow is electrical energy. So that's how the redox reaction is used to produce or generate electrical energy. And of course it uses a spontaneous redox reaction which means that the chemical reactions happening in each of the electrochemical cells are spontaneous, so they occur on their own without needing to use a battery or anything. So let's have a look at how it actually works. So in redox, you have one a cell that um, the products in that are oxidizing and one of them are reducing. So let's have a look at what that means again. So we look at the mnemonic oil rig. Oil rig. So. Uh, oxidation is loss of electrons, of course, and reduction is gain of electrons. So in one of the two cells, you have oxidation occurring, and the in the second of the two cells, you have reduction occurring. So to have a look, like to understand which of the cells is oxidizing or losing electrons, and which of the cells is reducing or gaining electrons is um, we've got to look at the standard electrode potential table. So this is basically a small version of that. The standard, what standard electrode potential means is the ability of a substance to reduce or the ability of a substance to gain electrons. So this is the gain of electrons. And each of the um, each of these reactions have a electro uh, a, volt, a voltage value, sorry, an electrode potential. And the most negative, so if you're looking at two cells with these substances in them, and to find out which one oxidizes and which one reduces, you've got to look at these values. So the one with the more negative uh, electrode value is the one that oxidizes. So this one, negative 0.76, is more negative than negative 0.45. So this one obviously oxidizes. So I'm going to write oxidation here. And this one is the one which therefore reduces. So I'm going to write reduction there. So when you've got two cells, this and this, the one of the more negative um, standard electrode potential value is the one that will oxidize. And the other one is the one that will reduce. So let's have a look in the example of an actual voltaic cell. So because we know that zinc is the one oxidizing, losing electrons, we know that that occurs at the anode. So I'm just gonna write here, anode, anode. At the anode, the substance oxidizes, and that's always the case. So therefore, I know that this is zinc. So this electrode here is zinc. And of course, the other one is therefore the cathode and that always occurs where reduction is occurring because this one's reducing so therefore this is the iron the FES the I, the solid iron all right so because the zinc is reducing sorry the zinc is oxidizing the zinc is losing electrons so therefore we're going from zinc solid to zinc 2 plus ions and electrons because it's oxidizing so we read this the other way because it's losing electrons. Alright, so zinc solid goes to that plus that. So I'm going to write that down here. Zinc solid 
goes to zinc 2 plus ions and two electrons, see? So that's losing electrons. And then this one is gaining electrons. So we have Fe2 plus ions, an aqueous solution, gaining two electrons and forming iron solid. All right, so these are the reactions happening in each half cell. So this one is losing its electrons. Therefore, electrons are going from this electrode to this electrode. But how are the electrons gonna go? they need an, a wire, an electric wire that transfers electrons or that can conduct electricity. So I'm gonna draw a wire here. All right, so electrons are going from here, the anode. Electrons are going from the anode to the cathode because we're losing electrons here and we're gaining them here. So electrons are flowing in this way. Electrons are going like that, from here to here. All right, and this one is going from zinc solid to zinc two plus ions. So this electrode is actually slowly turning into zinc two plus ions. So it's slowly becoming aqueous. The solid electrode here is slowly becoming aqueous as it transfers its electrons. So we have like little pieces of zinc metal here, uh, little pieces of zinc metal becoming zinc two plus ions, like that. All right, here we have the opposite. We have the Fe2 plus ions in the solution. So we've got Fe2 plus ions in here, actually gaining the electrons, gaining two electrons to form the ion solid and join this electrode here. So that's what's happening in the cells. Um, but you've got to notice that this is becoming more and more positive because the zinc solid is turning into zinc 2 plus ions. This is becoming less positive. So this might affect the ability of the electrons transfer because this is becoming so positive, it may not want to transfer electrons as the voltaic cell goes on and on. So therefore, we need something called a salt bridge. And this is basically a gel. So this is a salt bridge and you're always going to need one in any voltaic cell salt bridge and basically because this is becoming more and more positive we want to try and get rid of this buildup of charge and therefore the negative ions or the anions in the salt bridge will travel here and similarly because this is becoming less and less positive and we need to try and prevent this buildup of charge the positive ions, or the cations, are joining here, are going from the salt bridge to the cathode. So, let's quickly recap what's happening in a voltaic cell, what we always need to remember that it consists of. So, you always need to make sure that in, when you draw your voltaic cell diagram, you have your two cells, and you write your reactions for each of them. You have your external wire so that the electrons can transfer from one to another and that you always have your salt bridge to neutralize this buildup of charge. So, like I said before, this process of electron movements from here to here is generating electrical energy. And that means that if you were to put a voltmeter here, which is just basically something that measures the charge, it would show the voltage or the electric current happening here. Also, if you were to put a light bulb, if you were to put a light bulb here, since electrons are moving like this, that's electrical energy, and therefore your light bulb would light up if you were to connect it to this circuit. Now, let's just look at one more thing. So like I said, you have electrons moving from here to here, and you have a voltage being generated. Now you can calculate the actual numerical amount of voltage being generated by each cell uh, through this formula. The vol the electrode potential of the cell that undergoes reduction minus the potential of the cell that undergoes oxidation. So we need to look at the electrical, um, sorry, the standard electrode potential values again. So the cell that undergoes reduction is this one here, negative 0.45. So the E of cell, I'll do that here. The E of cell is equal to the voltage of the cell that undergoes reduction, which is this here, 
negative 0.45 minus the voltage of the cell that undergoes oxidation, which is negative 0.76. So that's the uh, voltage being generated by that cell, and let's calculate that. So negative 0.45 minus negative 0.76, and we get 0 0.31 volts. So, when you connect these two cells, which are undergoing the spontaneous redox reaction with these particular products, you have a voltage of 0.31 volts being generated. So if you were to connect your voltmeter, you'd have 0.31 volts passing through these two cells. So that is how you construct your voltaic cell, using spontaneous redox reactions in each cell to produce electrical energy. So that's the first of two uh, redox cells. The second is an electrolytic cell, and we'll have a look at that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments below if you have any questions, and I'll answer all of them.